You're looking at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 26 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw and choose a nice SmackDown Live from the past week, as well as our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, and after it is done, it is posted in full on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment and easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts, opinions, and questions read on and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at no holds barred wp or by dropping a comment in the comment section on youtube i am your host as always the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and every week i am continued to be joined by my co-host the boss mr corporate himself the glorious no remember I'm the, the blissful thank you. i've been repackaged he's been repackaged to the blissful corporate cappy hello how and, you and doing? Honor, in Cold honor Cappy. of the milkman, I'm drinking he's, some. Cold he's having some milk right prime gold Nielsen chocolate milk. Because you said you'll never drink milk again, I didn't. Yeah, he's drinking it in honor of the milkman. I drinking guess. Drinking it in, man. Just drink it in, man, or ink it in, man. Like this week, as I got my ink and paper right here, a lot of yeah. scribbles. I'm doing great. I picked up a Chris Jericho uh, action figure for my collection today. You good. did, you did, you got, you got, you got a big set of those now. Eh? You're oh, getting there. Getting there. You ain't gonna fit them on your wall anymore. I, I don't know. I'll have to find another corporate place for them. We'll I'll have to get you happens. a corporate shelf. A corporate shelf, yeah. The, the shelf Go of Fund Jericho. Me. The shelf of Put it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> we just came up with a new line for Jericho. Yeah, for everything. That guy could literally do a line like that for anything and it'd be funny. Yep. Like just from this week alone. It's hilarious. Um but guys, as we always do at the beginning of the show, your thoughts and tweets on there. And note small note here. Guys, we, we enjoy everything that you guys do for us. We enjoy the amount of tweets you guys send at us, but it's a lot. <laughs> We're going to have to start putting a cap on these tweets. We, 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 we appreciate the love we have for the podcast and want to get your voices on, but we might have to cap it to at least four tweets and it have to at least fit in the Twitter yeah. And we're talking to you, Irrelevance. You can't be sending us these massive paragraphs, man. <laughs> we're not reading your it. novel and your life story here. <laughs> they're trying to jab at you, but, you know, it's, we're trying to fit this all into like an hour. It's really tough to do that when we have a million tweets with a million paragraphs. So, guys, four tweets, you know, fit it in there. We appreciate it if we can just narrow it down per show, like four opinions for four tweets per show. And then we can nail it like that and then, you know, get it all done. But we, we do appreciate the love. You, you guys don't know what it means to us, how we gone from like 30 views to now like almost 400 views and more followers. You, you have no idea. It, it, we do appreciate it. So, guys, getting into your tweets. And we'll start off, as always... We're not going to start as always. Actually, no. Don't you have a rant? I do about, have a rant. Uh, update, on your, update on your plaque. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, guys, if you haven't seen yet, go check it out on YouTube. The one video, uh, my first box opening video, the WWE fail one. Um, here's the story. So, I ordered the Kevin Owens Universal plaque. I'll do the story all over again just so it makes more sense. And I was like, what? End of August. I ordered it. And it was the Kevin Owens win the Universal title plaque. So I order it. Month and a half goes by. I get it. I get to do the unboxing video. And it's the wrong fucking plaque. So it's Jericho and Owens beating Enzo and Cass at SummerSlam. Completely different than what the receipt says that I got. So I'm like, all right. So I called WWE shop. I'm like, guys, look, what are we, we going to do here? You guys sent me the wrong plaque. They're like, oh, wow, that's, uh, that's tough. Um, uh, basically, what we're going to have you do is we're going to have you send it to you guys. Or have me send it back to them. I'm like, okay. So at first, I'm just like, whatever. I'll send it to them. They'll send me the, the real one. Days are going by after that. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I going to have to pay for freaking shipping? That's their fucking mistake. I'm not paying for shit. Okay? You're paying. They're paying for the shipping. That's This is nonsense. So I call them back, and I'm going, okay, what's going on here? Am I going to have to pay for the shipping because you guys screwed up? 
Like, I didn't order the wrong plaque. You sent the wrong plaque. You're like, oh, okay. Um, so basically after a while, they're like, we're going to send you a paid shipping label to step, put on the box so I wouldn't have to worry about the shipping. So I'm like, okay. So the lady tells me it's going to take one to two business days to get to me, oh, the yeah. email. I'm like, okay, whatever. Today is the day. Today's day number two of the business day. I had to wait. And I'm like, I haven't received anything. No email from WB Shop. And I'm, I was going to call them tonight. I was like, you know what? What the hell's going on, guys? I'm at work today. Sure enough, I get a phone call from WB Shop. I'm like, uh-oh, what's going on? So she's she's like, um, so we see that you have you you got the wrong order. I'm like, yes, correct. Um, she's like, so we're 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 gonna send you the the shipping label. Is that correct? I'm like, yes. Okay, so let's bring up your account. So she brings up my account. Ooh, yeah. Um, I don't think we can do that. I'm like, why? Oh, because you live in Canada, so you can't send a shipping label to Canada. So yeah, we we don't we don't receive packages back if they're in Canada. Oh my god! So okay, so they're like, lady, what do you want me to do? I I I don't have the right plaque here, and I can't send you back this one. So what the hell is going on? So like, she puts me on hold. So after a while, she gets back and she's like, um, okay, um, Mister Mister Kyle, what we're gonna do for you is uh, we're gonna have you keep that plaque that we sent you, and we're gonna send you the right one. Are you fucking kidding me? They couldn't just do that from the beginning? like a I went through two weeks of this bullshit, and they could have just sent me at the beginning, oh yeah, by the way, we remember then that we can't send you the shipping label because you live in Canada, which is on my account. It says I live in Canada. How do you not know I don't live in Canada? Or you do live in Canada. I live in Canada. What the hell? They, but you know what? If they were good customer service... They would say, you know what? Sorry for your inconvenience. We're just going to send you the other plaque from yep. the be- from the beginning. From the beginning. But now I went through all this bullshit, and finally they're sending me the new plaque. Finally. And you know what? They haven't even sent me an email confirming that they sent it. <laughs> so I'm going to call back tomorrow and say, can I get a, like a confirmation number uh, and a shipping number to like know that you guys actually thing? fucking sent it this time? Watch they send the wrong one. They're going to send me the wrong. They're just going to keep sending me random plaques the entire time. You know, I'm going to start collecting free plaques. And I'm going to start doing unboxing of all these free plaques I'm getting. Because Derby Shop doesn't know how to send the right fucking item. No wonder you don't And like- I guarantee and all those wrong plaques, those have, again, they're going to have the right receipt, but the wrong plaque. I want to know who the guy putting the plaques in the boxes is doing. Must be like he must be smoking something. The weed here in Florida is strong. <laughs> the Rock said that one day. That's why you don't like WWE Shop. <laughs> yep. So I got my boys at Extreme Wrestling shirts. They know what to do. Never problems with them. It's too bad they don't have the plaques. Yeah. But anyways, we'll get into your tweets now, guys. And we're gonna start off. We don't have your 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 entrance theme yet, Michael Chow. We're working on it still. We're trying to find a good one. But he says the cue is his, his theme music in the beginning of this tweet. But you know what? We're, we're working on it, Michael Chell. Bear with us. Um, he says, this week was a complete 360 of last week. This might be Raw and SmackDown Live's best show since the draft. Pros for Raw. Braun says no more jobbers. Hashtag. <laughs> Jarrah KO win in spirit. And Charlotte and Sasha make Raw's third hour relevant again. Yes, yes, I definitely agree. Cons, the League of Nations prove they are a tag team that can beat jobbers. And Ashton Kirshner proves he doesn't watch WWE. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Rumors that for the first time in history, a woman's match will take place at Hell in the Cell. Thoughts? Hashtag fan approved. <laughs> I definitely would love to see that. That would be unbelievable. That would, I would mark out huge if they announced that. Yep. Um, moving on to our, one of our loyal fans, Tyler Jones at Tyler Jones underscore 22 on Twitter. He wanted me to do that. (laughs) He puts my fucking boy is finally getting a real match. And he's talking about Braun Strowman begging Mick Foley for her real Uh. competition. I hope so too. And he knows my opinion on it. I (laughs) bet. I want Braun Strowman to face someone competitive, like someone on the main roster, not these goddamn fucking jobbers every week. <laughs> like, it's a showcase for this guy every week. Remember the one week where he just wasn't there and they showed us the fucking vignette? Like, oh shit, I didn't even know Braun Strowman was here. Good thing you show me that. <laughs> God, I almost forgot about him. <sighs> uh, enough said. Moving on. Tony Mercer at Recrem, why not on Twitter? He puts so much better than last week when he's talking about he's talking about Raw. Main event was the best singles match between the two. Definitely the highlight of the show. Mm. Can't disagree with him on that. Yeah, can't disagree either. 
Next up tweet coming from Irrelevance at Forlorn. <laughs> and he took a couple from you this week, man. He put, having Sasha versus Charlotte at Hell in a Cell will just meh. Like Rusev versus Reigns is just meh. Some repeats won't always be Owens versus Zayn. Hmm. You're going to... I'm done. <laughs> you're putting you're putting that in the same category as Reigns and Rusev. <laughs> Uh, he puts found Sasha winning a bit pointless. Now he's not the only one. I saw a lot of people had some flack on this, but people need to get their heads around that Sasha should have been the champ. It wasn't her fault. Shouldn't have lost it. She was injured, so this is another way of just getting her the title back. Uh, after watching the match, I felt that the women's division is just dead on Raw. Well, I agree. It's like a three-person carousel between her, Bailey, and Charlotte. Yeah, like there should be more elevated with like with SmackDown. So it should be just main focused around the women's title. There should be other feuds going on at the same time. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, we might get a Bailey Dana Brooke feud. Now, Hopefully but. something like that. Moving on to Gamma at Gamma NU1. He but started slow, but didn't want to kill myself like last week. <laughs> Plus the main event was awesome. I'll give it an eight out of 10. Good show. Wow. <laughs> I didn't want to kill myself. Like <laughs> Last week was terrible. I'll give him that. Like it was God awful. I didn't even want to watch this week. <laughs> oh man. For Raw, Craig on tour at Craig Messi puts Raw wins 8 out of 10. Great uh, cruiserweight match. Thought it was for the title, though, and great women's title match as well. He also put for SmackDown, thought it was a good show. 7 out of 10. SmackDown has been winning spirits. <laughs> has been winning spirit squad return. Hated them. Good promo by The Miz and Ziggler. He also puts New Day and Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho was funny as ever. List of Jericho ain't get in, man. <laughs> He also gives us a little shout out. He says, have a good show, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you, Craig. We try. (laughs) We had a question by Irrelevance at Forlorn. He puts, what women's division is better and why? Top to bottom, SmackDowns is better. I would have to agree. Uh, You got Raw with the powerhouses, but, you know, there's less feuds. They're always focusing on one, which they should be focusing on others. Um he puts thoughts on a possible Sasha versus Charlotte Hell in a Cell match. In his opinion, he does not like it. Well, I don't want to see Sasha's face get bloodied. But other I than think that, he says he doesn't like it. But he also put because he doesn't want to see Sasha get seriously hurt again. <laughs> that is possible. Yeah. So, I mean, it, in a way, you, 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 you want to have it for the nostalgia. Then you don't want to have it because you don't want to see Sasha injured and on the shelf for a long longer than what she was out for. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. He says, plus, do you think we'll see Sister Abigail at No Mercy for the first time, as Bray keeps hinting at Abigail more? I don't care what Bray Wyatt does anymore. He's, <laughs> fucking, he's gonna he's lose. He's gonna just add to his lo- lost record just, at No Mercy. He's stuck in, like, a storage unit this week. Yeah. Neat. Um... For SmackDown, Michael Chow put finally a go home show that didn't disappoint both Raw and SmackDown score at a high of 8 out of 10, giving however ran, giving however ran this week's show a raise. I think you mean Raw. Pros for SmackDown, Alexa Bliss disarms Becky Lynch's woman's title. Ha! Huh? The Miz wins an Oscar for his Dolphumentary and shut up John Cena. <laughs> they kept interrupting him. It's funny. Mm-hmm. Cons, Orton, and Bray's worst of seven series. <laughs> and Baron Corbin squashes a spider with his hand and accidentally taps out. <laughs> yeah, that was. I know you were uh, pissed about that. Yep. He also puts, answering your question from last week, the Dark Cloud is currently filming a movie with Nicolas Cage and will be out another month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best news Celebrate ever. good times. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Chow. You just wait, 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 wait. So are you telling me that the Dark Cloud, a.k.a. Eva fucking Marie, is gone? You didn't say that. For Tell another me. month? You didn't just say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! She's out of here. I, don't, I hope she never She's comes back. She's gone. We don't see that biggest waste of space on TV again for, now. for a while. For now, maybe like she falls in love with Nicolas Cage, and we don't have to see her ever again. I just hope they realize that the women's division on SmackDown is going so well without her that they don't need to bring her back. Yeah. So for SmackDown, Gamma Gamma at New puts didn't hate it like I hated last week's show of Raw. <laughs> I give it an eight out of ten overall for uh-huh. SmackDown. Can't choose a winner this week either. Raw. 
with the cruiserweights and women's main event or SmackDown with Dolphin Miz and Cena Ambrose and AJ. You said that Gamma? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty tough. This week was uh was pretty tough for for ratings wise and for the brand. I guess this this, this show of the brand wars. Yep. So, but at least Raw was better than what it was yeah. last week. But we'll get into that. But before we get into that, we get into the, our second part of the show, the Luke Gallows polls. That's right. Welcome to the Luke Gallows Polls, our segment of the show where we read our Twitter polls from our boys at, at FunWD Polls on Twitter. Guys, go check them out. They do some funny polls, some serious polls, all polls for your liking from the number one brand in sports entertainment, and that is WWE. And our host of the Luke Gallows Polls, as always, is Corporate Cappy. We're going to start off with your boy. Did you think Braun Strowman's opponent, Chase Silver, was actually ROH champion Adam Cole? Yes or no? I don't even know. <laughs> I just I, I don't really watch like, ROH, so I don't know. I mean, I it's, I can't sit here and call myself a wrestling fan and thirty nine watch ROH, yes. but come on. I don't know. That was just a random tweet that I saw that I thought was funny. <laughs> Who cares about his opponent? He got uh, squashed. Neat. Here's a here's a good one. What's your opinion of Gallows and Anderson's current WWE run so far? Great, good, okay, or terrible? I think it's terrible. Terrible one with fifty percent. Because they're you you look at what they went from to what they are now. It's just pathetic. They've lost like three times in a row. How do you take them seriously? As like a, a from a faction that was team. dominant in New Japan to this bullshit. They should have beaten the New Day at some point for the titles, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Eight people said great. You guys all must be New Day or Enzo. Yeah, they're casual as fuck fans. Like the crowd in Raw last week. Um. Uh, See, we'll go with um, thoughts on how they've handled the cruiserweight division so far on Raw. Love it or hate it? I think I love it. I like it. Hate it, 52%. What? What do you mean? I mean, yeah, you could say they could fill in more. Like, they've only basically, out of the three hour, you get only, like, what, 15 or 20 minutes of cruiserweight action. But come on, guys. They can't surround the entire show. As much as how good they are, you can't surround the entire show around the cruiserweights. Oh. But you can give them maybe a little bit more time. I'll yeah, give them that. I think that's maybe what people are thinking, that they're yeah. not getting enough time. But Okay. We'll see. What was your opinion of the appearance of Kenny and Mikey from the Spirit Squad this week? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm at, I'm at like a not sure. Thumbs up, 63%. Wow. I'm with those guys. I love the Spirit Squad. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I, I, I think it was good maybe for the segment. Yeah, okay. I'll give me, I, can give, I think I can give it a thumbs up. Yeah. You can give it a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay. Um, what was your opinion of the Dolph Ziggler video package on Ms. TV this week? Great. Is it a great, good, terrible yep. answer? Yeah, I say great. That was awesome. percent great. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. It's good. They, they, they did like the basically the the, the twenty four hour or the twenty four seven series documentary. <laughs> it was like what was the title? It was some fucking hilarious. It was like, oh man, Dolph Ziggler's disappointment or something. Yeah. Oh know, my remember. god, it was hilarious. Yep. Uh, which one of these tag teams should WWE push on SmackDown? The VOD villains or the Hype Bros? Hype Bros. 57% Hype Bros. It's got to be Hype Bros. Mojo Raleigh's just become so good. <laughs> like you say, that guy looks crazy. like he drank 17 Red Bulls before he goes Literally, the guy looks like he's literally drank 18 Red Bulls before going out there. It's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, what was your opinion of the Baron Corbin and Jack Swagger match this week? Great, good, okay, or terrible? I can't say anything because I fucking hated it. Terrible. Okay, 38%. What do you mean, okay? <laughs> it, was, it was stupid. That literally didn't need to happen because they're having the match and no mercy. <laughs> I Fuck agree. Numb. And the, the way it ended was awful. Here's an interesting one. Who should be the next WWE... Who sh- should be on WWE's to sign list? Oof. Jay Lethal, Ricochet, Will Ospreay, or Adam Cole? Ricochet or Will Ospreay, one of those. Ricochet won with 32%. Yeah. Jay Lethal was right behind with 20 Ricochet should be there. He's Will good. Will Ospreay was last. 17. Wow. No love for Ospreay. No nope. love. Uh, and we'll end with uh, which show won this week. Raw or SmackDown. Oh, man, it's so tough. Uh, 
That's so tough. I can't say, but who won? According to the Twitter fans, SmackDown, 73%. Ooh, my at God, it, that's by a lot, too. At least it wasn't as bad as last week. It was like 92 to 8. So at least yeah. Raw's going back up a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. They were kind of slacking on the polls this week. A lot of like predictions for No Mercy, not a lot of uh, interesting polls. Kind of like just what was your opinion of what match? And mm-hmm. we'll get into our predictions in our predictions video, so I won't go over those. So that's going to be it for the Luke Gallows polls that's this week. That's it for the Luke Gallows polls. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, so let's get into the Raw. Let's get right into the review, guys. Right into the review. Raw this week, unbelievable. SmackDown this week, unbelievable. It's going to be really hard to pick a winner, so let's just... Get into it and dissect it, shall we? So, sign of the night already for Raw, though, was right at the beginning of the show. I saw signs and make Raw great again. <laughs> and that was just because last week's episode was crap. It was literally, I, like I said last week, we, we stuck our hands out and we took a horse, put it right in front of us and let it shit all over our hands. It's exactly what we got last week. It's garbage. There was another really good I sign mean, on Raw, and I can't remember what it was. Now we get into the opening of this Raw. And as Raw wasn't bad enough last week, we open up again with Rusev and Roman fucking Reigns. Even though he's not in the main event, they still They make still Roman open up with this guy. <laughs> they were cheering for Rusev when he came out in this. They were cheering for him. How can you push Roman Reigns as a babyface when they fucking cheer for a communist hating motherfucker heel? <laughs> How? <laughs> it's just no so stupid. And they were, at, we were certain that they were like toning out the crowd. Yeah, here. like like here's an idea. Let's let's open Raw with the same shit we got last week. That's so. That, if we want to beat out the crap show and the lowest rated Raw they've ever had last week, let's open up the same fucking way. Hey, what a good idea. So Raw didn't start off well. No, it was, you come out with Roman Reigns, like saying like, "Oh, the bloodline strong with the U.S. title of my family." Oh yeah, the bloodline. Let's let's bring up that shit because that's gonna get the crowd to cheer for you. The bloodline. Oh my god! I, 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 Rock is the only one in that bloodline can come back and get cheered. The bloodline, yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, I don't know. Like he comes out, then like Lana comes out, and Holf just mm. gorge, can gorge. We just, we just have Lana just stand there all night. If Lana stood there for three hours all night, I'd be happy with Raw. <laughs> god, and basically challenges. Roman on behalf of Rusev for the U.S. title. Then we get the brawl between Rusev and and uh, Roman. Roman again. See, I forgot his fucking name. So bad he is. They brawl again, just like last week. I'm like, oh, here we go again. I might as well just get up now and fucking leave my TV. And uh, they end up brawling near the at the stage area. And then uh, Roman basically says that yeah, they're gonna have their rematch at Hell in the Cell, and it will be in a Hell in the Cell match. So that's kind of interesting, though. Besides R- Roman Reigns and Rusev, the U.S. title is going to be defended in a Hell in a Cell match. Interesting. Hopefully they do something with the Cell. Yeah. We get, like, a spear. It's probably going to be a spear through the Cell. Guarantee. I mean, what else are they going to fucking do? They're not going to climb up top. <laughs> it's going to be a spear through the Cell, and that's going to end the match. Unless they tie Lana to the Cell. Mm-hmm. Oh, anyway. Okay, let's not go that far. <laughs> That wasn't uh, I remember Michael Chow tweeting us. He goes like, "When in doubt, make a tag team: Mick Foley, Roman, a- Roman, and Rusev." <laughs> I never want to see that. Oh either. man! But we get into the cruiserweights right after that. Oh yes! So that kind of saved from that horrendous beginning segment. We get Mega Man himself. Yeah, Mega Man himself. T.J. Perkins with that sick entrance. Unreal, man! That guy's so good. Um, facing Brian Kendrick again. Uh, really, really good match. But Brian Kendrick. Makes TJ Perkins tap out. Something I it's, wouldn't yep. have thought of seeing. TJ Perkins is from Los Angeles area. Yeah, and I thought they were billing that as like the, the Cruiserweight Championship match. Like a Cruiserweight title match, and it wasn't. So I guess Brian... That's why I went nuts at first. I'm like, wait, Kendrick won the title? Yeah. And it was a non-title match. I'm like, oh. I don't know. It's it's, it's weird. So are they going to have a match at Hell in a Cell too? I think so. I think maybe this is probably going to solidify himself as like his official rematch. He's going to challenge TJ again. I mean, I don't know what else you can do. Um, you can include, I guess, more cruiserweights. I don't know. It just it looks like they're going to have another one-on-one match. I think I really don't want Kendrick to beat TJ for the title. Oh. 
But I mean, who knows? Who knows how long Brian Kendrick's even going to last now? The guy's old. I don't see him sticking around that well, long. I think he's just there to put over the new talent. Yeah. But I don't understand why he's getting another title shot. Yeah. Maybe, uh, like, he already had his title shot at Clash of Champions and he failed. So, shouldn't they this be given into, like, another up and coming cruiserweight that's been winning lately? You know, Cedric Alexander, Rich Swan. I don't know. Oh, well, because they had a match yeah. as well. But we move on. Oh my god. <laughs> this was fantastic. Ugh. Because we were joking around about this before the match even started. Yeah. We literally were joking around saying, Oh, what's gonna be next? And I'm like, Oh yeah, it's gonna be freaking Braun Strowman coming out. Guarantee it's gonna be Braun Strowman. And you're like Rawr. I was dying. And then literally a second or two right after that, we come back from commercial break and <laughs> Freaking Braun Strowman coming I had, out! I almost spit out my drink. It was that funny. Literally, you, you <laughs> literally, he was dying. I couldn't believe it. Un freaking believable. Braun Strowman comes out, and he gets to face he face Chase Silver. Whoever the fuck this guy is, another local jobber they just pulled from somewhere. Like, who agrees that I know you want to be on WWE TV, and like, it's a chance for you to get noticed. But how do you get noticed? When you have to be fed to Braun Strowman. You don't even get a chance to do anything. Who agrees to this shit? <laughs> they must pay these jobbers a shit ton of money for them to get out there and have this guy just squash you. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. I And again, we're getting another fucking squash match that we don't need. Why? Why do we get these squash matches? I, I think <laughs> WWE only did this because they had nothing else for him for the last month and a half. That's probably it. <laughs> I don't know. And, and apparently, Big Show and Mark Henry are moving more into a non-talent role. Oh, so like backstage uh, yep. scouting, kind of like yeah. uh, what Jamie Noble and Mercury does. And okay. Like what Devon does now, like an okay. agent type. Yeah, they agents, still want yeah. him to like make appearances and stuff because they're still well known names. So basically, like Kane probably Kane's doing more his political shit, and then he's he comes here and there, you know, squashing milkmen yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, this is match of the year. So he but, squashes uh, Chase Silver, and then he gets on the mic and says, "Fully better have some comp- real competition for him next week, or there won't be a next week." Oh, it's Braun Strowman going to SmackDown. Watch out! Does that mean you're jumping ship? Strowman, hello, yep. or oh, you're gonna stop Bra, eh? Ooh, ooh, I'm, <laughs> you against the whole roster, eh? Yep. He's gonna go to SmackDown and squash all their local. Oh, jobbers. great! Now he's gonna fight the local jobbers on SmackDown. He's gonna fight Why the not? Milkman and James Ellsworth. Over oh there. man, I hope not. If that ever happened, that'd be t- <laughs> it. Almost get me to stop watching SmackDown, <laughs> and I don't want to. But anyway, so let's move on. We get the in-ring segment with Jericho and Owens, which is priceless. Um. There was even one point at almost a little deception. <laughs> um, Jericho, like I said, but I could always challenge for your title. Cross like, like, yes, yes, And he's yes. just staring at it like a deep trance. And one's like, oh, no, no, wait, yeah, yeah, tag team titles. Let's go over the tag team titles. Yeah, yeah me and you, yeah, Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys are going to tag together, to, and they have to prove themselves tonight by, by winning, and they have to face the New Day later. And if they win against the New Day, you know, they're saying, like, hey, let's solidify ourselves with the, the next uh, number one contender. What doesn't make sense is how come Cesaro and Sheamus didn't have to face New Day to solidify themselves as a tag team? Because uh, they're trying to showcase those f- that sickening League of Nations 2.0. <laughs> and what they did tonight, too, was even worse. We'll get into that later. We'll move on. We get Sami Zayn. Hey, Sami Zayn comes out. Hey, he has a match. He's got a match. And then we get fucking Titus O'Neil. <laughs> Are you kidding me? With some new gimmick. Oh, I'm like, uh, I know he's done. Fa- I guess he's done facing Darren Young now. But really, Sami Zayn versus Titus O'Neil. I'm like, oh, wait. S- Sami's done. He's getting squashed. It's over. But no, he wins. He the basically squashes Titus. <laughs> Titus got clashed, man. I don't understand. I, <laughs> I know, yeah, because... Sami Zayn's got a match, and he got a match. But really, really, Tyus O'Neal. And apparently, after the match, he had like some press conference gimmick. Mm. When he was talking, like, is he supposed? Yeah, to be, like, I saw a pictures of that. I wanted, to, I wanted to read about it, but 
nothing could bring me to watch that. So is that. this his new gimmick? Is he pretending to be like a pro athlete, like an NFL so. player or something? Like a heel, I guess. A heel kind of time? Yeah, I guess so. Yep. Whatever, I'll have to go back and watch it because nothing could have brought me to watch that at that time because I was just <laughs> pissed off about it. I, I think... Remember when we said Titus has potential? I think it just keeps going down. It just keeps going down. We had to see it so much, and just WWE just takes their boot and goes, nope, back down you go. Yeah, well, we gave, what happened when we gave him the mic? Oh, oh God. Yeah, that, prob- that was probably, pun- this is probably punishment. That was that was his final nail in his coffin right there. Pretty much. And where has Darren Young been lately? I thought they were supposed to make him great again. Where is he? Did Bob Backlund go on vacation? <laughs> is that why we can't see him again? Yeah. <laughs> God, excuse me. Yeah, getting you th- thinking about it's making you cough. Just choking, thinking about it. Okay, so we got Anderson and Gallows coming out. And they, uh, I'm thinking they're gonna face someone good. I'm like, okay, maybe they'll face someone you know interesting. They'll be a good tag team match. Nope, nope. I think about it even more. I'm like, all right, so we're probably gonna face Golden Truth. Sure enough, here comes Golden Truth. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't even want to talk about this. I don't know if I want to talk about this match. It goes back to that poll. Are they like? Are they pushing Luke? Or are they pushing Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson the right way? They're not. They're facing Golden Truth. Hey, they're a legitimate tag team. Better. Than, would you rather them face two jobbers? Maybe. At least they beat Golden Truth. Yeah, they beat them, and then... Hey, you know, R-Truth that, actually didn't look bad in the match. They he gave Goldust a, a, a magic killer after the match. Cool. That's great. Cool, because you know you need to solidify yourself as a dominant team. We well, kind of do, because you've lost, like, the last three months. But you, beating Golden Truth is not going to do it. Why haven't they given him a few with Enzo and Cast yet? I don't know. That's one thing. I thought they were at least going to face Enzo and Cast. I mean, interesting tag team match. But if he hasn't faced Golden Truth... They could have faced Shining Stars. I don't even know where the hell they went. It looks like they went back to Puerto Rico because they weren't even on the show. No, they had a backstage segment with R-Truth after the match, after R-Truth lost. Oh, okay. So they're not allowed to wrestle. They have to have backstage no, segments. No, they're talking about how Golden Truth just needs to put a down payment. All he has to do is give them you know, a down payment for the timeshare, and it'll make it, it'll make it all better for him. So they become salesmen now. Oh, okay. So no match. It's just salesmen. Yep. That's perfect. This is exactly what we need. That's how you build a tag team division. You make them have backstage segments as fucking... Oh, okay, I can't get into it. I'm done. <laughs> so move on. We have Owens and Jericho versus... Uh, well, not versus. I guess and uh, Kutcher and I guess... I don't remember his last name, but he's being referred to as Danny Dumbface by Jericho. Oh, this was fantastic. So they have a backstage segment and Jericho's holding his list. His list of Jericho. Like, uh, listen, I told you, if you came here, I'd put you on, on the, the list. list. And then they grab the list and they start reading it off. But first of all, Jericho oh goes, God. I'm going to put you on the list. Instead of drink it in, he goes, ink it in, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll put your list. Ink it in, man. <laughs> like, Jesus to the Christ. Christ. This guy, everything wow. he says is just hilarious. And now he's come out with that. Yeah. Danny Dunface oh, dumb dumb face goes, things, <laughs> Jer- yeah. Jerk, Jericho? 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 Yeah, Jericho. Jericho. Something like that. Things Jer- Jericho does wrong, and one of them was like losing to Fandango at WrestleMania. I'm like, oh, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, he brings that up, and <laughs> you can hear the crowd going, oh. <laughs> Owen's just kind of standing there. And yeah. Kutcher and the other goon are kind of, lo- uh, they say something along the lines of, oh, we're a brotherhood, you're not. And then Jericho puts his arm around Owen's. He's like, listen, we're conjoined Siamese twins, yeah. basically. <laughs> Joe's just kind of looking at him like, "What? I'm gonna go get ready for our match now." And then he says, "Just for the record, him and I would have been better on that 70 show yeah. than you two. Oh, they're taking jabs at each other. Just, yep. Oh man! So Jericho takes the list back, and he says, "You guys better stay out of our match, even though they're gonna be on commentary. And you better watch." And he just Shit. stands there, doesn't say anything, and disappears, and then disappears, and then he comes back on the other side, and he just stares at him again for like 30 seconds. I don't know how he keeps a straight face during this whole thing. I, I would be dying. Yeah. And he just it, leaves. Like, the crowd, oh, the crowd oh, goes man. along with it. It's just fantastic. Yep, yep. It was awesome. Um, and going to the match. Going to the match. New Day versus Jera KO. Really, really good match, by the way. Awesome. Like, I I, I can't even believe Jericho. Like, did some deception move? there. Yeah, what do they call their finishing move? The uh, dream something or no? Oh my god, it's uh, I had it. Oh uh, man, 
Yeah, I can't. I don't remember. But they're they just one thing I want to point out. There are too many commentators on this match. This is where they they had the three originally. Then they this is where they brought out Kutcher and uh, dumbass uh, D- Danny dumbass. <laughs> And literally, they weren't even talking about half the match. They weren't even talking about the match. This is, I hate when WWE does this. They bring people out on commentary, and they're literally not even focusing on the match at hand. I hate when they do that. I, I understand yeah. you have to bring people out to commentary for some matches, but come on. I hate when it gets carried away. Yeah, and they don't even end up talking about the actual match. Like, I saw. I even read it on Twitter. Like, there was a lot of people annoyed with this. It's like it when just, Natty goes on commentary and talks about yeah. uh, two paws. Yeah, uh, oh the finishing God. move is Midnight Hour, by the way. And by the way, M- M- Michael Cole called it the Lion Tamer at one point in the match. We had the Lion Tamer instead of calling it the Walls of Jericho, Good like he always Cole, did. Finally, finally, you know what the move's called? Yeah. Midnight Can't Hour wait. is New Day's finisher. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jer- Owens could have gone in, but he didn't. Nope. So. And then the New Day picks up the victory yeah. on Jericho, and again teasing maybe some deception. I know Jericho's going to bring it up next week on Raw, so it's going to be crazy to see. So we move on. Some more cruiserweights. Rich Swan versus Tony Nice. Um, Tony Neat. It was a really good match. I love the cruiserweights. Just incredible to see in the ring, guys. It's probably one of the highlights of Raw. It's just the amount of talent they've got in this cruiserweight division and the product they're putting out there is amazing. Like almost pay per view quality matches sometimes. Um, nice picks up the victory with his pretty sweet finisher. I don't even know what the hell he calls it, but it was unreal. Um, and then we move on. I just, uh, I think WWE wants me to rant about jobbers. I think they literally do this on fucking purpose because this is pathetic. I don't understand. We get Cesaro and Sheamus versus local jobbers for like the second or third week in a row. Why? Why? We should just call Raw the jobbers. Why are they facing at least Golden Truth or the Shining Stars? Why do they have to face local jobbers? Why? How does that make you look any what strong at all? How do how is that? They should be called Monday Night Jobbers. This is so bad. Not only do I hate the team of Cesaro and Sheamus, it's like the worst idea they've ever had. Yep. And then, but now they're facing local jobbers. And then Seth Rollins doesn't even have a match on Raw. Cool. Great. He came out. We forgot. He he came out in the New Day Jericho match. And yeah. Just, oh wow. He didn't, didn't actually do get in the ring. So we don't get a Seth Rollins match, but we get we get jobber ma- two jobbers two jobbers, jobbers facing Cesaro and Sheamus. Oh yeah, oh, that will make it for a great Raw. Sure, that's way better than having Seth Rollins fight someone. And everyone's still booing Sheamus because no one cares. No one gives a shit about him. It's terrible. You know they did once actually one part in the show today. They, they, uh, I think it was before that match. They they played the SmackDown. They were playing the SmackDown theme while talking about Raw. That's sad. I, think I remember that. That was really bad. And get your shit together. Before you give us Cesaro and Sheamus against Jobbers and you play the SmackDown theme on Raw. The Sm- might as well be watching SmackDown. Honestly, maybe that's getting us to like, you know, you should probably watch SmackDown instead of this yeah. shit. There's a hidden message. Now we get into the main event of Raw. Oh, yeah. Into some history making here. A woman's title match and main eventing Monday Night Raw. Literally the only reason I watched Raw was waiting for this match. We were all part of history, guys. That was This was incredible. Unbelievable. Um, we have Charlotte versus Sasha Banks for the women's title. Before the match could even happen backstage, uh, Charlotte and uh, Dana Brooke walked past Bailey, basically like chirping her and saying she doesn't belong here, yada, yada, yada. And as Charlotte leaves, Dana Brooke's there. She goes, playtime is, is over. over. Pat, pat, pat. You're right on freaking <laughs> Bailey. And she gets pissed and just like basically shoves the shit out of Dana Brooke and she like hurts her knee. So Dana Brooke doesn't come out to ringside for this match. It's just Charlotte versus yeah. Sasha one on one. What happens when how it should be. And this match was just incredible. It made event a raw and it lived up to the expectation. It was incredible. There's the one spot too, where Charlotte did that crazy Phoenix splash esque type of flip backflip off the, the corner turnbuckle right on the Sasha. She got her like, with her left elbow. Unbelievable. And this Sasha ma- did the, the double knees to the head yeah. from the top Oh, rope. my God. This whole match was just, it was good. It lived up to what should be a main event of Raw. And yep. then you get your girl yep. getting your title back. That was awesome. The second Raw in a month wins the championship. Yep. And again, like we said Only before. Only on Raw, yeah, it, it, like. it had to be done because she wasn't originally supposed to lose yeah, the title. She never should have lost in the first place. And this was actually a great way to reach and put they had to think of a way to get the title back on Sasha. They could have waited till Hell in a Cell, but 
but they, this was actually a really smart idea. You know what? Let's do another main event with the women yep. to boost that division up yeah, and boost the women's re- the revolution. It, it's a, way, a great way to do it. So yep. what better way than having the women's title and Sasha winning it on Raw for the second time? The women continue to break barriers on the show. Yep. As, uh, you know, some people say, oh, you know, they don't, they don't deserve the spot because no one cares. Well, give them the time and people will care. Exactly. And as we just and- saw... You gave them the time, you gave them the main event, and they lived up to it. It was awesome. People I, loved it. People yeah. went home happy. There was no hate after that. Only the second time in the 23 years of Raw history that there's a women's match has exactly. main evented the show. Could exactly. you have seen that five years ago? Kelly Kelly versus someone yeah. main eventing the show? Absolutely no. not. No, absolutely not. So props to these girls. They yeah. did amazing. And because Both of that, them. I gave Raw this week an 8 out of 10. I would agree with a couple of our viewers saying 8 out of 10. I would give Raw an 8 out of 10 this week, 100%. I'm just sick of the fucking jobbers, man. Yeah. That, that's what's. If there were no jobbers, I probably would have made it a 9.5. It would have been close. Well, yeah, I'm going to give it an 8.5 for the women's main event match, continuing to yeah. just uh, impress and do, mm-hmm. you know, care, go into territory that they haven't gotten in before. Maybe we'll get the Hell in a Cell match, main eventing, Raw, like. Yeah. It's just awesome. It's crazy. And I'm so glad. I, I, I just love it. And I'm excited for the future. Division. I love it. If they're going to continue with this, I'm going to love it. Love it. Continue it on both brands, please. Yes. Speaking of both brands, <clears throat> we'll get into our favorite show of the week. It's starting to, I mean, after last week, it, it, it's not our fault. Oh, but just like Raw. Yeah. It started out. Team Blue. Started out Team Shit. Yep. With Bray Wyatt. Versus. So it was announced before on the pre-show we get, Bray Wyatt was going to face Mr. It's get, gotta be Kane. Mr. It's gotta be get the hell off my TV Kane. Rematch oh. from the great match at Backlash. Great. What a way to open the show because I really wanted to see Bray Wyatt versus fucking Kane just so I can see Kane beat Bray Wyatt again. And sure enough, the fucking happened. Because Randy Orton came on the title. Bray, Li- Bray Wyatt lost again. <sighs> what the hell was that? Not well, only that, Kane. I I I know it's been, it's been doing this for a couple of weeks. But what happened to Kane not being billed from parts unknown or not being billed at all? Now he's being billed from Knoxville, Tennessee. He's a redneck now. Are you serious? He won by count out, and he wins by count out. <laughs> Which was opening was worse, Reigns and Raw or uh, Reigns and Rusev. That's a tough question. You or... guys, hang on. That's a question for all of you out there. If you're listening, what opening was the worst? Kane and Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt losing by countout, or Roman Reigns and Rusev opening for the third week for the third row. week in a row and pointless shit just announcing a match that Mick Foley could have done. We want to hear your thoughts on that. We want to hear your thoughts. Please let us we know. Might, we might might make a poll and announce yeah. it on the on the Luke Gallows <laughs> polls next week. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll make the poll. I'll get it done. I'll, I'll make it last a week. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so Randy Orton appears on the Titan Tron sick. Yeah, awesome. and, like, he's, like, upside down, and he turns right side up. It's like he's, on, he's, in, he's like, in Bray Wyatt's trance. So, and... next, moving on, because I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> and it even cuts in. To Alexa Bliss's entrance versus Nikki Bella. Yeah, we get we, the starting adventures of Bray. Now, last week was Randy Orton's fantastic adventure backstage. Now we get Bray Wyatt's fantastic adventure backstage. And to Randy Orton's kind of warped dimension, which is literally a hallway with fog lights and fog. <laughs> Sick. Yep. So Anyways. it cuts into my girl's entrance. Yeah, it cuts off Alexa Bliss's entrance. That was great. Yeah. Not. Not. So she starts facing Nikki Bella, and then... Carmella comes down for, or I think Carmella was on yeah, commentary. Carmella was on commentary. Yeah, Car- Carmella yeah. was on commentary for yeah. this. And then she just jumps in the ring for no reason. Alexa was going to win the match. Thank yeah. you, Carmella. But my lord, though, Alexa Bliss. <sighs> yeah, see, so you're jumping God. on the bandwagon now. I don't even jump on the bandwagon. I just, she's hot. She's hot as hell. You can't teach that. Mm. So Carmella spoils Alexa's match with Nikki Bella. Thanks, Carmella. Yeah. So then Carmella and Nikki, uh, um, Carmella and Alexa start beating the crap out of Nikki, and then of course Becky Balboa has to come out for the save. Man, can I say that was literally the slowest run down the ramp I've ever seen? Literally, it looked like I, she was running in molasses. I think a snail could have ran down the the, the, the I think ramp faster. Could have got down faster. <laughs> Oh my god! I think Braun Strowman running at full speed could have made this, sh- could have made that run faster. Or you know what? No. How about 
Rikishi or Yokozuna could have made it to the <laughs> ring faster than her. Come on, Becky. I don't know what that was. It literally looked like they, they made the camera slow motion. I don't know what that was. She's terrible at running. She can't run. And so, of course, she gets in for the save. And what do we get? Yeah. We get a tag team Tay Long match. just sat up from in his bed and said, what? Holla, holla, holla. Is that, is that what I think it is? A tag team match. Yep. Oh, yeah. We get into a tag match. Our girls take teaming up. Yep. And um, so basically Carmella and Nikki were just brawling again. Yep. And it led to a twisted bliss for the win, baby. Yeah, Woo! that's a huge win on the champion. Yep, a twisted bliss for the win. <laughs> so it gives her momentum going into that title match, makes her look strong. It's usually what they do before a yep. challenger faces a champion. They at least have them win a match against them so it makes them look credible, mm-hmm. makes them look like a, a you know a credible opponent to actually yep. win the match. This, I'm actually really excited for that women's title match. That's going to be really good. I think uh, Becky and... Alexa can pull out all the stops in that match, and we're actually going to get a really entertaining match and a really so good match. So, and we're also going to get a Carmelo versus Nikki match. At That's right. No Mercy we're going to well. finally get the maybe the ending feud for that. We'll see what happens after that. Um, yeah, I remember. I know what happens next year. We get the breast cancer awareness thing. We forgot to talk about that on Raw too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had the, okay. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Enzo and Cass. That was the uh, only time they appeared on Raw. It was the the breast cancer awareness. I know. Okay, yeah, it's a good cause. Whatever. What do we got over yeah, here? A couple, couple wins. <laughs> so on on Raw, they they gave all these girls titles, but on Raw, the the titles were literally like tucked underneath the belt and all rolled up. And Enzo had like the hardest time in the world. Enzo botched. one title fell. He botched, and, and he the botched. one girl held the one title up upside down. It was a mess. So so this week, same kind of thing. Girls in the ring. Um, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan in the ring. This time. And Daniel Bryan gets on Villa Belts. And he just literally takes one pull. Whoop. Perfect. Sheets off. Perfect. SmackDown wins. That's it. Before I even done the review, SmackDown just won the entire show because it didn't botch the blanket. Here's a question. Would you rather, if you had the choice to be given one, would you rather be given the Raw women's title or the SmackDown women's title? Mm. They're both Equally looking good. I think but I, I'm a blue guy. I, my favorite color is blue, so I would pick the SmackDown I'm Women's title. I'm going with the red because it was the original title. Because uh, it was the main title. Okay, okay. But either way. Yeah. So basically it was like Raw decided to wrap the belts in a blanket and SmackDown forgot that they had to reveal them because before Dana Bryan could even reveal them, his music started. He's like, hey, wait, we're not done yet. Yeah, so don't you see we have something in the ring? Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, so, yeah, because they're the stop or more than pink campaign for the Susan G. Coleman thing starting this month. So, yeah, good for WWE on that. Moving into the hype bros versus the VOD villains. Yeah. God, Mojo Riley, man. Literally, the guy looks like he's chugged 18 Red Bulls. It's like, yeah, I'm ready to go to the wing. Let's go. It's just full guy, on charge, yeah. man. It's crazy. I love him. I want to see this guy in the gym. Apparently, he says he's, uh, according to commentators, he's best friends with Gronkowski from the Patriots. Yeah, your boy from the Pats. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I wonder if he deflates balls with him. Ah! Ha <laughs> ha! It's Tom Brady. Yeah. Wrong. So, Wrong. Uh, the Hype Bros won this match, clearly. Yep. Plain simple. The VOD villains are becoming <laughs> basically yeah. the squash team. But we also had the Ascension up on stage. Oh, yeah. They came so, on stage. So, we had, we, had all three of the, we had all three on, on TV, at least. <laughs> Unlike... Yeah. I mean, at least they were near the ring. I like the Shining Stars on Raw, where they were backstage handing out goddamn fucking pamphlets. So the pamphlets. Ascension, apparently they ha- they're having a feud with the Hype Bros now, because they're yeah. standing at the... You know what? No, good. That's good. We're getting more feuds in their tag team division, instead of Raw, where it's only concerned... Raw looks like it concerns around certain feuds. Yep. Like, they care more about us, like certain feuds than they more. Leave SmackDown is spread out. It all means something. That's why I love SmackDown. Yep. And then we get <laughs> into... Probably the set one of the best segments of the year, Miz TV featuring the Dolph Umentary. God, the do- this was probably <laughs> segment of the year, hands down. This probably already won the award. Like this is crazy. And- so Miz comes out. So that's like this a couple of weeks they've already done this. So they had the, the Miz celebration with his pictures everywhere in the video. Now this week is Dolph Umentary on Miz TV. Basically the WWE twenty four sh- documentary. Yeah, it's a basically he showed the video, it's basically a twenty like the WWE twenty four documentary, but it was about Ziggler and his failures throughout his career. <laughs> and like Ziggler's already in the ring. Miz is wearing a red suit here, which is kind of weird. You're on SmackDown, man. Gotta wear a blue suit. 
That was not. I was just. Oh my god! They so did such goes, a good job on that video, man. So such it goes a good through job. his whole career from like FCW. Yeah. Or uh, even before then, what was it? Um, OVW. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then up through the Spirit Squad era, and then up through the hi. I'm Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler. To everybody. I love that. And then Dolph they even Ziggler. put the Shawn yeah. Michaels one in there where he's like, you're Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> um, oh. And then leading up to his thing with Vicky Guerrero, which was, yeah. <laughs> And I then leading to his world title. Well, actually, he didn't show the world title part. And then they just showed him get it. It was basically a bunch of Ziggler's bloopers throughout his career. And it was great. It was so well done. So well done. As much as it's just showcasing how bad... Ziggler's career and like the downs he's gone through it was so good and so well yeah. put together and if that wasn't bad enough and it, I loved how they took the, some superstar snippets from other documentaries and made it seem like they were talking yeah. about Ziggler terrible yeah <laughs> I can't believe uh, how, how terrible it was I mean, well, it was clearly not from that interview yeah and if that wasn't good enough we get the Miz saying we've got some special guests for you coming the out the Spirit Squad who got no oh reaction because the SmackDown crowd has no idea who they are. Well, look where they were. The stadium wasn't even big enough to hold like fifteen thousand. They had a lower bowl, and that was yeah. it. It was but definitely I, casual I mean, central. I mean, I went nuts when the Spirit Squad came yeah. out. I was like, no way. So we get Kenny Dykstra and Mikey. Kenny God. Dykstra, if you don't remember, he was like the leader of the Spirit Squad. Yeah, it's and still he, in great shape, and he was the one who was supposed to be like. The future. The, the future yeah. of that. And of being Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. He never became anything of Kenny yeah. Dykstra. So then they come out and they do some... And Mikey's like bald now. Yeah. <laughs> and they do some cheering yeah, thing for doing them. The give sister- me a D, give me an O. Yeah, just doing their o. spirit squad gimmick. It's yep. crazy. It was such a good segment. And they start beating the shit out of Dolph Ziggler. Yep. Dolph Ziggler just kicks the crap out of everybody and is left standing in the ring, and then just this promo was just so good. Segment of the year. I can't believe down. how well they're building this feud. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. This is just building up, because their match is crazy. Career versus title match. Like, that's a huge match. Like, Ziggler putting up his entire career on the line. He, if he quits, he can't go to Raw. Can't go anywhere else. He's put his career on the line for a, a, a Intercontinental Championship. It's so crazy, man. Like that, that, I can't pick a clear cut winner in that. It's it's gonna be nuts. So Ziggler coming out on top after that. Yeah. And then we get the one on one match I between Jay Uso and Jason Jordan. And okay, I I can see where they're going with this, and a lot a lot of people can't see, but I honestly think the Usos are gonna win the titles at No Mercy, and they're going to continue their feud with American alpha after that. And it's going to be for the titles and then at survivor series. It's going to be the Usos versus American alpha for the titles. And that's where AA is going to win their first championships. But <laughs> you're supposed to make the Usos look strong going into their tag team title match. And yeah. you have Jason Jordan win with a chin lock into a roll up. Yeah. I guess it kind of showcases their wrestling ability, but yeah, I know what you're saying. Like you, you want the Usos to look. They're stronger. not even involved no. in the, in the feud right now. And they try to injure there, Jason no. Jordan after, and they get come out and get saved by Rhino, Rhino and, and Heath Slater. The man be the, the, the man be. <laughs> What is it? The beauty and the man beast? Oh, yeah, the beauty and the man beast. <laughs> so wear a t-shirt, I got kids. And Slater's Titantron says, I got kids now. God, man. And those shirts apparently have been selling like crazy. So, like, you know, if you can sell merchandise in WWE, you're going to get pushed far. So, and yeah. then I, I've read a little bit. I don't know if it's true or not, but WWE wants Heath Slater and Rhino to be, like, the new day of SmackDown. Be that oh comedic tag God. team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like it, but I, I don't know. I think the Usos... I really like the new Usos, the, their new theme, their new persona, yeah. their new heel gimmick. I, I really like it like too. It. it fits. It, it's exactly what they needed to yep. get back into relevant instead of getting booed because they're... Y'all say, <laughs> we say Us, y'all say yeah. Oh Crap. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was good for the kids and stuff back then, but now, like, because Roman keeps getting booed and, and the Usos, they know the Usos are, like, affiliated with Roman, they get that's why they're getting booed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, what better way than to just make them get booed for a reason and make them heal? Mm-hmm. But I still don't understand why you have Jason Jordan win it via roll up over Jey Uso. Yeah, you know what? I think I sense. agree with you. I think they could have just made the Usos dominate and beat American Alpha here. But I don't know. Maybe this is going to be something to say. Like after the Usos win the title, hey, you think Jason? Yeah, I yeah. beat you one on one, man. Like we've beaten you guys before. Yeah. Well, we expect them to win the titles down the road and be the face of that division. Clearly. Yeah, for sure. It, think, they will be. Yeah. Getting into something else. 
that didn't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, we have your favorite match of the night, Jack Swagger versus Baron Corbin. I'll let you take the floor on this one. You know what? I know they're so huge behind Baron Corbin. They had him beat Dean Ambrose. Okay? He was the champion at the time. I know they love the homegrown the talent Memorial guys. Battle Royal, he won that too. They love the home talent. They have the little homegrown talent. But why make him face Jack Swagger? I know Jack Swagger just came over from Raw. <sighs> and maybe I, as like a first. I don't few. know what you else you do with Baron Corbin. I mean, you, you could have. Where the fuck was Apollo Crews this week? Why not continue that for you? At least that's something worth watching. He's probably on main event. Ugh. <sighs> So we get Jack Swagger and Baron Corbin having a match. I find it really hard to believe that Jack Swagger was once the world heavyweight champion. And he cashed in money e- in the bank. He also was ECW world champion. This guy right here, Jack Swagger. He lost the world title within a month. And though. he's become the most irrelevant piece of shit I've ever seen. No one gives a shit about Jack Swagger. The only reason why he gets a reaction is because that we the people thing yeah. is like the funnest thing people want to do at a crowd. It just Anyone for, could come out. He Slater yeah. could come out and say it. No. So we get the ending of the match. Baron Corbin. This is the worst. The, I don't know what the fuck this was. Baron Corbin's in the Patriot lock, and he's like crawling to the ropes, and he's reaching for it, and his hands kind of banging on the ground. He's not. There's no clear tap, but the referee calls a tap. What? <laughs> I don't know if this is a botch. Or if this was real to make Jack Swagger look stronger. But Bear Corbin didn't tap. This is now going to go down the record books as Baron Corbin tapping to Jack Swagger. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to elevate his career. I, 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 just, I love how there's no Jack Swagger fans around me to boost about this because I fucking hate Jack Swagger. Because that was bullshit. <laughs> I can't believe they made him lose to Jack Swagger that way. You just oh, no. built him up. You had him beat Dean Ambrose. Looks like he's going to be the next number one contender. And then you just made him lose to fucking Jack Swagger, who hasn't been relevant since 2010. And, <laughs> and then Corbin, like, loses his shit after the match. He, like, starts yelling at the referee. I'm surprised he didn't give the referee an end of days. He should have just give the referee an end of days, Jack Swagger an end of days, the whole fucking thing an end of days. Yep. And that would have been the end of it. And then he grabbed the steel steps and threw him around. Yeah, he's just and... pissed off. I would be pissed off, too. And if that wasn't bad enough, we're going to get a rematch at No Mercy in the pre Great, great. Is, he gonna like, is his shoulder going to be up and they're going to count three? Are we going to get that horrendous shit and have irrelevant ass Jack Swagger win again? Is that the only way you can win is on a botched tap? Unbelievable. Just get the fuck off my TV, Jack Swagger. You don't need to be here again. Just leave. <laughs> we know SmackDown's the land of opportunity, but not for you. You've had your chance. You've been champion in two different brands back in 2010. Why do you need to be relevant again? Why? I really hope that he's not getting a push. With I this. hope so. I hope not to. I, I like, cannot. They need to have the new talent get pushed. But I assume Corbin's going to kick the shit out of him at the pre I really season. hope so, so I can get behind that and literally stand up and fuck yeah. Just give him a nice so clap. After two, after the two worst segments of the night, we finally end with something good here. We get the Cena, Dean Ambrose, and AJ Styles showdown in the ring. The title looks phenomenal, pun intended, on AJ Styles. <laughs> Unreal, man. The guy just looks like he deserves to be champion and yeah. be champion on SmackDown for a long time. He's got the soccer mom haircut, but other than that, <laughs> hey, don't he's got judge new the gloves, hair. too. He's, he's got, got new gloves. gloves. He's got great gloves. But anyways, he he just looks good as a champion. I love it. I love it. I love Styles as a champion in WWE. I love it. It's, it's what I've always wanted to see, and I'm actually seeing it. And then you got Ambrose and Cena going at it, and Styles just kind of like sitting back listening to them talk. And Ambrose is like portraying a heel character right now. Yeah, talking yeah. about Cena, how he's a part timer. Oh man, just the the, the 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 line that Styles gave Cena was unreal. Basically, he goes to Cena and goes, "You chase history," meaning like John Cena tries to chase history by becoming the next sixteen time world champion. So Styles says, "You chase history." Looks at him and goes, "I make it." Mm. Mm. I love has that I, line, unreal. Because it was originally Ambrose and Styles in a ring, and I love when Cena comes down. Yeah, <laughs> before oh he can God. even say a word, he can say a word. Hashtag shut up, John Cena. Both of them go nuts on him before he can say a word. <laughs> then when Cena finally says something, he goes, "Talk is cheap." Drops the mic, and they all start yeah, fucking brawling with each other. Yep, just killing each other, giving each other finishers. Oh man! So it ends up with Cena. 
looking like he's going to end on top. Nope. And then Dean Ambrose boy, comes out of nowhere. Dirty Deedsy. Dirty Deeds. Dirty Deedsy. Sure. Whatever. Un- Uncle Dino. <laughs> Uncle <not>? Dino. <laughs> yeah. I think he gave him a Dirty uh, Deeds on the outside, didn't he? No, I I, I think... I thought it was on uh, the ring. ramp. Oh, no, yeah, it was on the ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So then look like Ambrose is going to end on top. And then, and then out of nowhere, Styles, Styles comes, comes off the in. barricade. And then friggin', friggin' uh, phenomenal forearm. And then Styles ends up on top. Yeah, yeah. buddy. My boy Styles ends up on I top. I love AJ Styles. He's carrying that, that fucking brand He's right so now. good. This guy deserves to be champion up to Mania. He could literally carry that title to then. I would not have a problem with that. Yeah. He's so good as a champion right now. So good. And props to Cena, though. I mean, he's making this feud, you know, he, he's doing his part, too. Exactly. The whole 16-time yeah. world champion crap. Mm-hmm. And Ambrose, I like the new Ambrose, not the funny, yeah. goofy fucking he's, around He's trying Ambrose. to be serious again and, and make a point that he deserves to be champion once again. That's why this triple threat looks good. I know a lot of people have mixed reactions with that and saying, oh, it's just going to be a typical triple threat match again. I don't think so. I think we're going to get a really out-of-the-box triple threat match to elevate No Mercy. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be so, so good. Too. Um, so, but yeah, that was SmackDown. SmackDown, I'm giving it. And this is going to be ju- this is going to determine the winner for Drum this week for me. I, I can't do it. Eight point five. Wow. SmackDown wins point five more this week. What I give Raw eight point five. Yep. SmackDown gets an eight. Oh, it's so a Raw one this week for you, really? Raw's winning this week. Mm, I don't know. I just I love SmackDown. Honestly, I, I SmackDown was better top to bottom, but the most memorable thing I'm taking away from this week was the main event women's. I can't match. I can't argue with that too. And both cruiserweight matches were good. I'm just giving the point five better to SmackDown due to that Dolph that the feud between Dolph Ziggler and Miz, the intensity in that. Um the the whole ending segment with the triple threat it's just ah oh, smackdown is just good each feud is cuz each feud means something in the show yeah. except for the pit, how pissed off i am no matter how pissed i am with corbin and swagger everything means something on the yeah. show raw just too way up and down man like they, they they do something crazy to boost ratings and then they just have like three shit yeah. shows in a row yeah. smackdown's consistently at least a 7 every yeah. week that's why i given it the point 5 and smackdown is continuing to win in my book you're giving it to raw this week just this week just i'm this sure week. SmackDown will win next week. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be the the show after, and they this is, don't this have. This was the go home show for No Mercy, and besides the Usos and Jason Jordan crap, I thought every other feud <clears throat> leading up to No Mercy was good. Yeah, I agree. So, guys, that was SmackDown and Raw review. We'll get into the last part of the show. We've got a lot of headlines. A lot of week. headlines this week. A lot of news, and that is the WWE headlines. That's it. I love that theme. Welcome to WWE Headlines, folks. The part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. And this week, we have about six topics for this week. Six. That's right. You heard it right. Six. Wow. And we'll start off with the most recent news. And that is Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. There is a heavy rumor going around. That Goldberg is coming back to the WWE, it's 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 almost a done deal, and that he'll be facing Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Wow. So last That's night a bombshell. Yeah, I know. Last night Goldberg appeared on ESPN to address his WWE status. No announcement was made about his potential return to WWE though. Dave Meltzer is reporting that Vince McMahon <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <laughs> the corporate cough going on. God, I gotta take a water. One sec. Ah, okay, I'm good. So yeah, Vince McMahon uh, has had the match scheduled, but isn't very gung ho about doing it. The reports also notes that while WWE is ready to bring Bill back one more time, there are still lingering negative feelings in politics regarding him. Um, WWE does want the match to happen so they can promote WWE 2K16. They feel Survivor Series is the best option. Future opponents for Brock Lesnar appear to be locked in at some point, and apparently one of them is Shane McMahon. Uh, the match with Shane could take place at WrestleMania 33. 
At this time, WWE seems unwilling to change Lesnar's WrestleMania plans to include Goldberg. The match between Lesnar and Goldberg is looked at as a one-off, and that is not leading to any kind of rematches between the two. I can't believe that they're not saving this for Mania. Yeah. Or Royal Rumble, if they're going to have it in that... That Al- uh, Alamo Dome, 60,000 yeah. people. That's I, I don't know. But I guess they're trying to boost Survivor Series a bit uh, bigger, and they need something to headline it. So Goldberg versus Lesnar actually would be unreal. So, <coughs> be unreal for Toronto, since they get yeah. nothing. Toronto! But yeah, interesting. Moving on to the next bit of news. Vince McMahon, speaking of him, Vince McMahon bought TNA's video library. Their entire video library. Doesn't give a shit about the wrestlers of the promotion. No, he just wants the library. So not only did he buy that, now the WWE Network is going to get more content now. With TNA, we're probably going to get the TNA section of the WWE Network to go back and look at AJ Styles matches, Kurt Angle, any WWE star has gone over there. And that's basically like ninety percent of their roster with throughout the years. So what a what a, what a library that he's bought in. And leading into that, and par- because he was able to buy a library, apparently Billy Corgan, Corgan is, is now rebranding TNA. TNA. So it's not even called TNA anymore or Impact Wrestling. It's gonna be interesting to see what he does because he wants to. I guess he says he wants to sway away from TNA because a lot of people don't refer to it as total nonstop ac- action. They refer to it as the sexual term tits and ass. So he wants to rebrand TNA and have it its own thing, and I think the TNA brand different. is dead anyway. So yeah. it makes sense to want. It to might even it. stop being on TV. It might just go to uh, an independent circuit like Ring of Honor. You might get maybe a Ring of Honor kind of TV time. Yeah, or, maybe get like a local or cable or PWG company. or something yeah. like that. So it's interesting. Okay, I like what Billy Corgan wants to do. It's like he doesn't just want to sell it right away. Um, <laughs> it shows me. that he actually cares about the about the you know. The wrestlers and their livelihood. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I want to see when we're going to get some more TNA content on the network. <laughs> yeah. And when they're going to start mentioning TNA on live TV. I can't wait for the first time Michael Cole or JBL says something about TNA. I'm be like, oh, oh, there it is. There it is. There we go. Just like WCW. Just Vince is buying everyone out. Yep. Well, he's got the money. Might as well. Yep. And then we had the Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella announcement. Oh yeah, of, uh, they're we're expecting their the first kid. child. Yep, spring 2017. Congrats to them. I and mean, I know Breeze wanted it for a long time. If you guys have watched Total Divas, oh yeah, she's been wanting a kid uh, for a very, yeah, very, she's wanted very a long kid time. for so long. Talking about, you know, that's why she wanted Daniel Bryan to kind of retire as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, he's only on the road one day a week, so it's not too bad. Yeah, but it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, he's not a live event, so like, he's not like, wrestling. No, so as much as he wants there. to wrestle. He just can't get cleared by WWE doctors. And, um, I think in the back of my mind, Bree is thankful that they won't clear him. Yeah, I know. So, now, now he can actually take care of his kid yep. instead of being a potato somewhere. Yep. So now yeah. I'm sure the kid's going to be vegan too. You know, great. <laughs> oh, that's going to be interesting. I wonder what they're going to call it. That's that's my my thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I can't think of a name right off the top of my yeah. head, but we'll Either see. Way, we'll see what happens. To Daniel and Bree for finally being able to. Have their first child yep. one day for a long time. Moving on to some other bit of news. Former WWE talents getting stabbed. And we'll start off with Jamie Noble getting stabbed. Was it like right outside his home or something his like mo- that? His mobile home. Yeah. He actually lives in a trailer yeah, park. Does he live gentlemen. with uh, Nydia? Is it Nydia? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Nydia is his real life wife. Uh, but apparently a, he was cut off on the road by some guy. And they were like getting into it on the road. And then these goons followed him home. God. And then got out of the car and then, like, stabbed Jamie Noble. Why? Why stab Jamie Noble? Come on, man. He's such an honest living man. He makes good money, lives in, chooses to live in a trailer park. How it's can probably, you do that like, that an guy? upscale mobile home, but probably still. Is. Like, he's Slater's upscale double mobile wide. Double wide. We get ourselves it's a probably, double wide. This is probably a triple wide. Yeah, I wonder if Jamie Noble lives in the same trailer park as Heath Slater. Yeah. But either way, that was crazy. Yeah, now of that, you get your former boy. Still my boy. Still your boy. Former talent, Alberto Del Rio. With apparently like four different stories that yeah. happened. With God, this. I don't even know which story is true anymore. <laughs> I keep hearing shit. Then I hear stuff like there's been no police reports. Then I hear stuff. It was uh, altercation with a, an airport, first a, of all. An airport. Then we get alter. Then we say it's altercation with the homeless man. And it was just like, what the fuck? What is then, true? Then Paige was there apparently that we didn't yeah, even know so that she was there. So it was noted that... Um, the latest twist of the story involves Del Rio's real-time, real-life girlfriend, WWE superstar Paige. Meltzer says, 
also claims to have had a story involving her in the incident relayed to him. Um, the, the report notes that Del Rio and the man went to the ground while the man was sta- still stabbing Del Rio. At that point, Paige got involved in the altercation and was thrown by the suspect. Del Rio then went to check on her, and that's when the knife-wielding attacker took off in his car. Then we get a report saying that Del Rio claims he and Paige were actually attacked by a drunken homeless man in the parking lot of a restaurant. Christ. While the rest of the story is in line with the other reports, the couple claims the man left on foot this time when Del Rio went to check on Paige. Either way, I think uh, whoever was the AAA or whoever it was that was supposed to have him appear, still pissed off. Yeah. Because it's the second time that he's no-showed for an yeah. event. I mean, obviously this is a lot worse than him just not no-showing last time. But we need to figure out which one of these stories is actually real. Yeah, and they spoke to the San Antonio police and they reported there was no stabbing incidents in the area all weekend. Apparently where he is, or he was, or if he was actually there. So which one's real? Like, do we are we ever gonna find out what actually happened? I don't know. And like, they reported that the police San Antonio department um, has just one stabbing in their jurisdiction on October second, and it was Dot Del Rio. And yeah, he showed that he posted on uh, his Instagram the picture of his arm. And that was yeah, like, terrible. what the hell? I don't understand. Oh man, we, we need to know what tr- what story is true. Yeah. Like, this is this is getting really really like. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> The Rio, man, I don't want to. <laughs> you got to take care of yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Like, jeez. So we'll move on to another bit of news. Royal Rumble, twenty seventeen. As we said before, I'm sure you guys all know. This year, in January seven, January twenty seventeen, is going to be in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, where they had it in nineteen ninety seven. Sixty thousand fans going to be probably one of the biggest Royal Rumbles of all time as well. Um, they're really trying to distinguish the big four, huh? Yep. So yeah, we had SummerSlam being four hours. Survivor Series probably gonna be Bill Goldberg versus uh, Brock Lesnar in the rematch. It's probably well, gonna be four yeah. hours as well. Now Royal Rumble um, being in, a, in an arena like WrestleMania and Survivor Series would be is crazy. In, uh, stadium, uh, I mean. There's some news about it. So it'll feature both Raw and SmackDown's live rosters competing for a WrestleMania title shot. Just so the Royal Rumble itself, um, it's not confirmed if it's gonna be forty man yet. Um, this year's winner will get a title shot for their respective brand. Okay, so in previous choose, years yeah. with brand splits, the winner was able to choose which show's champion they face. This year, it's whatever show they're on, they'll face that champion. So yeah, I, I, I'm actually looking forward to this. Yeah, this is going to be crazy. I'm, I'm I want to see if they can actually sell out. What's the buildup around it to make it 60000 Yeah, That's what, what is, what is going to be the match? That- yeah, the match. It's, hopefully it's not involving the guy. Yeah, I want to know how they're going to, if they want to bring in 60,000 fans, it better be a fucking good main event. <laughs> I hope so. Now, you know what? I was talking to someone today, and they, you know what? As much as you want to hate this, and a lot of people want to hate this, <coughs> excuse me, it makes sense. Have, I know you're going to hate me, have CM Punk return. <laughs> Here we go with this shit again. So it makes sense. He's not going to go back to the UFC. Dana White doesn't want him back. He can't fight in the UFC anymore. What else are you going to do with your life? Are you going to you going to go back to like an independent mark mixed martial arts circuit? You're not going to want to do that. You want to make money and you want to start a family with AJ. You want to you want to at least ha- be backed up with all. I know you got a big paycheck from your first UFC fight that you lost in the first 14 seconds. If that's not a clue that you belong in WWE, then I don't know what is. You know you're going to get paid. Look but at all these stubborn. part. He's not going to go back. Look at all these part timers. <coughs> you don't even have to come back full time. You can come back part time, just like Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, John Cena. They're all part time. You can get a contract like them. You don't have to be there all the time and be forced to go on the road all the time. You can have contracts like that way. Even Brock Lesnar. You can have a Brock Lesnar contract. Have like five matches a year. You're fine. They'll pay you. They want him back as much as they want it to seem like there would be, like has grudges against people they don't they want hulk hogan back for christ's sakes and look what's happened to him after what they did to him yeah. basically making like he never existed they want him back so it's not like they don't want cm punk back it's cm punk not wanting to come back okay they should contact him and literally do you know how fucking bananas that place will go if the royal rumble's happening whether whatever spot he is in the royal rumble you hear his theme music i guess <laughs> the other rumor that I 
thought was maybe excuse gonna, me. Oh. Yeah, we're both got the corporate cough going on. <laughs> <coughs> it's that time of year, folks. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking of, maybe they'll make it a larger Royal Rumble. Maybe have a forty man again since yeah. there's two brands. I do see forty. Maybe have like twenty each from each brand. Or maybe, well, actually, this probably would never happen. I would love to see a woman's Royal Rumble one day as well. Oh my god, that'd be interesting. But they don't. I don't think they have enough right People, now. People, that'd be literally. You have to have everybody. The champions too, and it would still only be match. like fifteen or twenty. <laughs> True, but th- I think that'd be cool as like because it wouldn't be as long as the other one, but they could yeah. have it to start the show. Have the women's yeah. Royal Rumble. I think they could do it. Well, you have so many people. You have Nikki, Naomi. You can bring back Tamina, Paige, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Dana Brooke, Charlotte, Emma, uh, F- Nia Jax. Yeah, there's ten Summer off the back Ray, there. Fox. Summer Rae, Alicia Fox. There's twelve. I mean, it'd be like fifteen, maybe twenty, if you bring up some people from NXT. Yep, it'd be crazy. Peyton Royce, your girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's her name? Liv Morgan. Just oh, have yeah. them come out. Maybe have like a few returnees, like they did yeah. for the men. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do with that Royal Rumble coming up. But I would um, love to see that one day. Yeah. Since, yeah, since the women are breaking barriers with all the d- things that are men that are that all the men are doing now, why not have a a smaller women's Royal Rumble? Yeah. I see it. So getting on to the last bit of news. This is really interesting. It involves Seth Rollins. We just heard this tonight yeah. before we started the podcast. Uh, a looting scandal. <laughs> so there's reports saying there's an autograph signing in Chile featuring WWE star Seth Rollins. It got shut down after fans caused a scene and started looting. <laughs> so you go there to get an autograph with Seth Rollins and you just start robbing the store. Yeah, apparently Seth Rollins was only at the signing table for 10 minutes before he was forced to leave because fans started to loot. That's crazy. And they kept looting even after Rollins left. Hashtag loot crate. Apparently <laughs> there's no word if anyone was injured at the venue. What the fuck? What, what the hell Roll- is wrong with people? What like, was Rollins thinking? Chili, like- you just screwed yourself from Derby ever coming back and doing anything there. Yeah. Like, you ever want to see a superstar again? No way. No, no. Yeah, you guys looted the store with Rollins? our uh, top guy in it and, and risking injury to this guy. I'm just imagining Seth Rollins sitting there and being like, oh, hey, how you doing? Let's sign an autograph. Some guy's, like, breaking out the door with all these... Yeah, just fucking just looting, putting everything... Yeah. It just everyone starts doing it at the same time. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Unreal. Do they Unreal. not have security at these events? I guess not. I guess, I guess they even have... Chilly, I mean, if I everyone know. did the same time, it's pretty hard to control. I guess, but like you go there for a Seth Rollins autograph, and instead you just rob the store. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Go take some drugs. Way to go, oh, Chili, not? man! You guys get. <laughs> you guys get the... Way to go! You're never gonna get an autograph signing again, man. <laughs> I can't believe that. I honestly can't believe that. <laughs> Before we end the show, we'll just say that. Uh, stay tuned for more unboxing videos coming up. Yeah, we got a lot. Um, our boys at uh, Extreme wrestling shirts we got some stuff coming from them and uh hopefully uh, we get uh, our first and, episode of and, the when, <laughs> and your plaque that's supposed to be coming yeah that too <laughs> we'll see when that comes in whenever i get the confirmation number you know hopefully i'll call them tomorrow i'll see when yeah. i get it but uh, if you guys like the unboxings we're gonna start doing more of those because yeah let us know if you guys videos. love them guys we we want to we want to hear feedback or maybe you have some ideas for for us of what we should do well yeah We'll always take feedback, and then we'll we'll let you guys know what we want to do. Yep. But other than that, guys, that's going to end off the show this week of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on the Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that discusses and reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown Live from the past week, as well as our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE, such as looting involving Seth Rollins. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, and after it is done, it is posted full on all our outlets, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere for your enjoyment and easier for you and convenient for you to listen to us. Guys, if you'd like to join in the conversation and keep it to a minimum of four tweets per show, tweet us at WP or by dropping a comment in the section on YouTube. As always, I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Glorious Kyle Masters. Thank you. And every week, I am continuing to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful yeah. Corporate Happy. Stay tuned for our blissed off no mercy predictions. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned and, for that, uh, guys. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving, Dolly. That's right. If all you Canadian fans are there, happy Thanksgiving to you, and have a safe weekend. And we're here, as always, reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Back to back, and you have to set me. Victory sweet, and you know,